even though my story was horrendous as an unaccompanied nine-year-old in 1999, I can't imagine what this story would be like now. Solito is about my nine-week, 3,000-mile journey from El Salvador to the United States in 1999. And at the time, my parents paid a coyote to help me bring here. And he promised that I would make it here in two weeks. And it didn't turn out that way. And I wasn't the only one who had paid the coyote. I was part of a bigger group of immigrants from El Salvador. Um, so I was one of seven, then the coyote and one of those immigrants run off together. And then we um, became a group of six. And it's with these six individuals that um, we try to make it to the United States of what I call La Usa. And it takes us three tries to cross the Sonoran Desert. As a little kid, um, my dad left when I was one years old in 1992. Uh, my mom left in 1995. And they left to this country that I had no idea how far away it was, but I knew uh, what the country looked like through the TV screen. And so as my five, six, seven, eight, nine-year-old brain understood the United States, I genuinely thought that my parents lived in a house similar to the Full House house and that the beach right outside the Golden Gate was the Baywatch beach. And so this idea of snow in California, of pizza every day at school, um, that's what I was expecting. And after the two months that I spend trying to get here, once I do end up at my parents' not house, but apartment, uh, two bedroom apartment that they rented one of the rooms for and rented out the living room to another couple, my entire world just shrunk. And I think that has been the hardest thing of living in the United States, trying to match that idyllic uh, idea of the country with this very harsh reality that did not match. And, at, and also that I wasn't a, for lack of a better word, a normal kid, meaning that I had no papers. I was undocumented and my world became limited. And that is a world that I did not know um, in El Salvador. I, had a, I could run anywhere. I could become um, anyone that I wanted to be. I wanted to be Superman, um, a superhero. But you know, uh, that, that is uh, the world that I thought I was walking into uh, in 1999. Well, as a kid, I had no conception of borders. I had no conception of legality. I had no conception, conception of careers. Um, what I did have a conception of was loving and wanting and needing to be with my parents. Um, so everything else did not matter. What did matter was that I wanted to meet my dad for the very first time because he left um, before I turned two, so I had, I had no memory of ever touching him. Although there are pictures, there were pictures, but I didn't remember uh, having those memories within the pictures. Um, so that was the biggest kind of like energy that propelled me and helped me for, make it um, across the border, and it's what gave me hope. The most difficult task that I gave myself when I started to write this memoir was that I didn't want to replicate that what, in my opinion, a lot of journalists do when talking about immigration or what a lot of non-immigrants uh, do when they write either fiction or non-fiction about immigrants, which is that they only focus on the horror of what it means 
to try to make it across one, two, three, multiple countries in order to make it to the United States. Um, and it was a tall order that I couldn't have done without the help of my brilliant therapist and my amazing uh, partner. And I want to offer up a better, a more full, a more true, a more honest account of what it truly means to just be a human being trying to make it across the border to be reunited with their loved ones. And in order to do that, I had to not dig that deep in my memory bank to recall the jokes, the amazing food, the, the fart wars that uh, me and these other um, individuals uh, like Chino, Carla, and Patricia that we experience on our way up here. And in doing so, I hope that I have painted a fuller picture of the people that helped me survive and the people that showed me what it would look like to be an amazing, a badass human being. The book is dedicated to three very special individuals, Chino, Patricia, and Carla. And if you read the book, um, you will understand why. You know, I wouldn't be alive without them. But what surprised me, the writer of, of the book, and um, when I read the final um, product, um, when I recorded my audiobook, the moment that moved me was when I talked about this young 16-year-old Guatemalan boy named, who I named Jesus um, in Tecunumán. And I genuinely think that he is the reason why I have tried to work so hard in this country. Because for my entirety of my time that I've spent in this country, there hasn't been a day that I've forgotten what he taught me. And what he taught me was to work hard. You know, he stopped going to school in fourth grade because he had to. He had to work and feed his family, his brothers, and I never forgotten that. And he was so proud of riding his little bici taxi. Um, and he didn't know how to read um, and write, but he knew how to count and he knew how to hustle, and he knew what money was worth. And I've carried him with me, and I hope that he's okay. And this is not to say that, um, you know, materialistic things are the only things that matter. I also want to counter that, um, because a lot of us immigrants believe that, you know, we come here to work, but that's not what I'm saying. Uh, we come here to honor those that have shown us and given us a little pieces of themselves. And